To create a modern rail transit system, Los Angeles needed to borrow quite a bit from railroads of the past. It's a comeback story worthy of Hollywood. You won't find the name Union Station on a sidewalk star here, but this aging and long forgotten railway station in downtown Los Angeles, California, has recaptured the spotlight, taking on a starring role as the main terminal for LA's vibrant transit system. The two supporting players in this production are Metro, which operates four rail lines within Los Angeles County, and Metrolink, a regional system linking five surrounding counties. For Union Station and the area it serves, this renaissance of passenger rail was a long time coming. Union Station is considered the last of the great railway stations built in America. It opened in 1939 as a passenger terminal for three major railroads, the Southern Pacific, the Union Pacific, and the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway. During World War II, the trains were often standing room only, and Union Station saw a steady stream of travelers pass through its beautifully appointed main waiting room. But by the 1950s, train travel had sharply declined, and for decades the huge terminal remained nearly abandoned except for Amtrak. Today, the passengers have returned to Union Station, but unlike 60 years ago, most of them are not traveling cross-country, but commuting from neighborhoods in nearby counties, making train travel a part of their daily lives. Standing tall near Union Station is the headquarters of the LA County Metropolitan Transportation Authority, better known as Metro. Metro manages some 200 county bus lines and provides pickup facilities for the flyaway buses that run between Union Station and Los Angeles International Airport. But the agency also operates a busy commuter rail system on four major routes called the Red, Gold, Blue, and Green Lines. At peak travel times, 250 trains are running along 73 miles of track. Boardings average 250,000 per week, and ridership continues to grow. Here in downtown Los Angeles, there's just been an explosion of, of residents coming in and living downtown. And one of the maiden reasons is that there is such an availability of transportation. The Blue Line was the first Metro light rail to open in 1990. It begins downtown at the 7th Street Metro Center and travels 22 miles south to Long Beach. For most of the trip, the Blue Line is following a right of way first built by the historic Pacific Electric Railway back in 1902. Borrowing from older railroads was the key to making the newer lines efficient and affordable. This was even more essential for the regional Metrolink system, which was built mainly on pre-existing track. It was hugely important because the right-of-way through these urban areas is irreplaceable. The fact that they had been built, uh, in many cases, 120 years ago, and preserved through the years enabled Metrolink to start within two years. The busiest Metrolink route is the 57-mile-long San Bernardino, which carries 5,000 passengers to and from work each weekday morning, many of them connecting with the Metro lines at Union Station. So we carry those 5,000 people in in about two hours. So that's 2,500 people an hour. So that's roughly equivalent to 2,000 automobiles an hour for two hours in the morning. Same thing going east in the evening. So. We do the work of one lane of freeway. Another Metrolink route stops at Fullerton Depot, a city located 30 minutes south of Union Station and a great place for train watching. Metrolink makes several stops here each day, as does Amtrak's Pacific Surf Liner. There are two historic railroad depots here. The former Union Pacific Station now houses a restaurant while maintaining its original architecture. The Fullerton Depot has also been restored to look as it did in the 1930s when it still belonged to the Santa Fe Railway. The Fullerton Depot is still a working railroad station, providing services for Amtrak trains, including the Southwest Chief that travels daily between Los Angeles and Chicago. This cool rainy day kept rail fans from their usual gathering spot along the pedestrian bridge to watch the variety of trains that pass by here on three tracks including many Burlington Northern Santa Fe freight trains. But one young rail fan didn't let the weather dampen his enthusiasm. Back at Union Station, the Metro Gold Line heads out over elevated track towards its first stop at Chinatown. This commuter line is also popular with tourists, 
who enjoy the scenic 14-mile ride heading northeast from downtown LA. Part of the Metro Gold Line uses the median of the 210 freeway, once again taking advantage of the preserved right-of-way of the Santa Fe Railway. Pasadena is currently as far west as the Gold Line operates. Construction is well underway on a six-mile extension serving communities east of Los Angeles. The new track is curving out from Union Station over the Santa Ana Freeway, enabling the Gold Line to continue in the same direction. This is a first for Union Station, which was built as a stub end terminal, meaning trains come in from one direction and stop before reversing course. Another first for Union Station happened in 1993, when it became a subway terminal for the Metro Red Line, with service to Hollywood and the San Fernando Valley. The route, which is all underground, stops along the way at stations designed to reflect the history or character of its location. A visit to the metro station at Hollywood and Highland takes in the famous view of the Hollywood Hills. Surrounded by showbiz, the station became part of a large entertainment complex and is designed in a highly theatrical fashion. The subway station at Hollywood and Vine reflects the glamour of Hollywood's golden years, with movie projectors and a ceiling covered in film reels. But the real action is once again happening at street level where a rebirth of the Hollywood neighborhood has been in progress since the subway opened here in 2000, attracting both tourists and residents back to an area that had been in serious decline. Virtually every station on the Red Line has some sort of project in the works or completed. And nowhere is that most evident than Hollywood and Vine, where they're building a W hotel, luxury residences, everything on top of the metro station. LA's transit system has had a powerful effect on many of the neighborhoods it serves. But its goal is not to replace the freeways, but to offer an alternative. We don't consider it as attacking the automobile culture. I love sports cars myself. I like to drive. It's just when there's 200,000 other people trying to go to the same place at the same time, it isn't fun anymore. If they choose public transit, they have a much better alternative. They can get more quickly to where they're going, they can save money, and, and they just have a better lifestyle because they're able to do things on the transit system that they wouldn't be able to do while they were behind the wheel of a car. With the help of a classic railway station, some well-preserved rail lines, and a cast of thousands, LA's rail transit system is a critically acclaimed production, making this city of dreams a better place to live and work. And what's most important, it's helping people get to where they need to go every day.